All right. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to let people join and we're going to get started in just a few minutes. So everyone keep joining and we'll get started in just a few minutes. All right. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Glad to have you here. Looks like we are ready to get started. We've got people joining us. So while I wait for others to come live, I want to tell you a little bit about myself and what we're going to do over the next 30, 35, 40 minutes. So my name is Rachel Taylor. I have been in education for three years now, a little over three years, actually. Um, I first started off working for a BSN program. I was their tutor that worked with pre-nursing students all the way until students passed the NCLEX. Uh, while I was there, I found Archer Review, and I've been working with Archer Review now for two years. My absolute favorite thing about education is helping students be successful when they didn't think they were going to be, when they never thought that they would reach NCLEX success and they get to reach that milestone in their lives. It's my absolute favorite thing about education. So over the next 35, 40 minutes, we're just going to do a QA. and a um, just see if you guys have any questions. I'm going to tell you all of what Archer Review has to offer. And I've got a few NGN and a couple practice questions built into the Q&A today. The last time I went live on TikTok, it was a request that I um, went ahead and added some practice questions in. So I did add some practice questions into the Q&A today while we talk about all things Archer Review and NCLEX. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chats. So um, on TikTok, you can add it in the comment box and in the chats on Facebook and YouTube. I will answer those live as they come through. So ask your questions. Feel free to um, tag any of your future nursing friends that you have. And let's go ahead and let's get started. So my first question for you guys is where are you joining from? So through the Q&A, I am going to use Slido. I don't feel like you have to use it, but if you would like to join me on Slido, you can go to slido.com and just type in Archer. If you don't want to join me in Slido, just let me know in the comment boxes where you're joining me from. I want to see where we have people uh, in the world. So I've got someone joining from the Philippines. Someone in North Dakota, hey, you're close to me. I'm in South Dakota uh, is where I'm located. The U.S., awesome. Ethiopia, incredible. That's amazing. I'm so glad to have you here. California, awesome. Facebook, YouTube, where do I have people joining from? Nigeria, amazing. Welcome, Jonathan. Glad to have you here. Mississippi, Kenya, awesome. Alabama, the Philippines, looks like no one wants to use Slido today. That's okay if we don't use it. Where else? Houston, amazing. Amazing. The UK, another individual from Canada. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I'm super excited. I do have a few NGN items for us to practice, and one is a bow tie. It's been heavily requested that we review some bow ties together, so I have one picked out for us to do during the session today. All right. Welcome, everyone. Remember, if you have questions, feel free to go ahead and ask them. Um, just as we're going live, I'll answer them as soon as I see them. So I have uh, someone from Florida asking, do we offer tutoring service for first semester nursing students? We do. We do offer tutoring to nursing students. Um, if you have any specific questions on that tutoring, let me go ahead and give you our tutor email. And you can ask right there and I can help pair you with a tutor that would be a good fit for you in your first semester. So it's NCLEX tutors at archerreview.com. I just put that in the YouTube chat for you. Um, so yes, absolutely. We can help you with that. Uh, the next question that came through is, hi, I took my NCLEX last week. Um, what suggestions do you have for passing in the future? This is one of my favorite questions. So number one, take some time to grieve. You may find that you um, 
you feel a little sad about it. You maybe are emotional about it. You maybe feel a little mad about it. The grieving stages are totally normal to go through. Go through them. Take the time you need. I usually try to limit students to two weeks. And here's why. Take the two weeks you need emotionally. Come back and let's make sure your next attempt is your last attempt. My best advice is, and I'll talk about it at the end, is we have a program called Intense Prep. It's six weeks. It's intense. Uh, just, you know, the name says it all, um, but it is really guided. And you're going to have a tutor that follows you throughout that six weeks and really helps to make sure that you are successful on your next attempt. Now, my other advice to you is analyze how you are studying. Were you passively studying? Were you just like, oh yeah, I'm watching a video. I'm here. I I'm, you know, listening. Or were you active and engaged with the material? Were you explaining that material out loud? Were you understanding the why? There's always ways to improve your studying. Um, I'm in my master's program right now. I still have ways to improve my studying. And so always work to find what works best for you. Improve yourself each time you study. Make sure that your study sessions are valuable. Somebody asked if this is for PN, RN, or both. Anyone is welcome to join. Um, I'm not going to give super specific to PN or RN. It will be general to pretty much all of you. All right. Any other big questions? My other advice, if you're feeling a little bit down about taking that exam, I don't want you to feel down. Some of the best nurses I've worked with have failed the exam. And I really think sometimes we put ourselves down or other people put us down um, when we're not successful on this exam. I've seen it hundreds of times at this point um, in my education career. And don't do that. Don't put yourself down. You have room to grow. This is going to help you develop perseverance and resilience. And those are great qualities for a nurse to have. Pick your head up. Let's make your next attempt your last attempt. Consistency truly is the key to success on the NCLEX. Okay, so let's see what questions do we have come through. Um, if the board is blurry, I'm not really sure why. It looks very clear on my end. I am also streaming on TikTok and Facebook. So if you're having any trouble, maybe join me there. It might not be as blurry for you. Um, for maternity, GTPAL, what part do twins count as two? Only for living. So only for that L for living. For G, T, P, and A, they're going to count just as one. Multiples count as just as one. But then for living, the multiples will count for however many multiples there are. Great question. Okay, lots of questions coming in on TikTok. Let me go there and answer a few. And then I'll tell you guys about tutoring. So what percentage of students fail at 85? I don't really have a specific set of data that says, hey, this many fail at 85 questions or this many pass at 85 questions. And I don't really want you going into the mindset of like, oh no, this is how many people fail or pass at 85. I want you going into the mindset that you're going to get 150 questions on that exam. And if it shuts off before, then that's okay. I want you to go into that exam with the mindset of I'm going to go do the best I absolutely can. And that's good enough. Um, I don't want you going into the mindset of, oh no, this X percent of students fail at 85 or this X percent of students pass at 85. Um, I don't think that self-analyst is good and I feel like it just doesn't help. So I, I wouldn't encourage that. I would just be careful about that mindset. So let me tell you guys a little bit about private tutoring. So we have hand-selected every single private tutor. And let me tell you, they're incredible. I love the team that I get to work with. I'm the senior manager of NCLEX services. So I manage the tutor team and they are incredible individuals. Um, tutor sessions can be whatever you want them to look like. They can give you personalized feedback. They can go through every test and question you've done in your QBank um, and really see where are you weak? Where are you strong? How do we focus? They can create a custom study plan based on that. They can go through testing strategies. Maybe you just failed the exam and you don't know what steps to take next. Our private tutors are here to help. Maybe you're like, Rachel, congenital heart defects are not my thing. I don't get them. Our tutors can help you. Guess what? I'm not great at those either. Um, I listen to Morgan Taylor, our CNO. She's a peds nurse. Uh, explain them all the time. And gosh, they're hard, but she's so great at explaining them, right? Um, so maybe you have an area like that. You just know that you're not strong there. Well, let's meet with the tutor and let's review it together. They can help you with test anxiety. That's something I'm very passionate about. Struggled pretty significantly with test anxiety when I was in nursing school. And so my goal is to help you guys overcome your test anxiety as well. 
I will say sessions are $75 per hour, but the value that you get out of them is immense. Some students just need one session. I've had students book three to five sessions. At three sessions, you start getting a discount. The more you sign up for, the bigger that discount is. So let me go ahead and actually show you guys that real quick. Someone's asking how to get there. So you would go to Archer Review Tutors. You would then go to NCLEX Tutoring. Let me get that little tab off my screen. And then once you're here, the more sessions you sign up for, you're gonna get a discount and it'll tell you, add two more to get 10% off. And then I think at five sessions, you get 15% off. And at 10, you actually get 20% off your purchase. And that can be a mix and match of private and small group tutoring, which is incredible. If you are interested in private tutoring, here's our main private tutors. And let me give you a few recommendations about each of them. So I would really recommend Allie if you need evenings and nights. She is amazing. She has weekends open Saturdays, Sundays, every evening, usually around eight central time. She is so patient. She's so kind and she's ready to help you guys be successful. Emma is who I would recommend for cardiac and for pharmacology. Again, super amazing. She does great. We've got Jennifer Bonner. Jennifer does really well with maternity. So does Elizabeth. They're both maternity experts. And then Megan, she kind of does a little bit of everything. She does great in peds. She does great in critical care. She does amazing when it comes to testing strategies, testing plans, um, testing anxiety. Our team is really a great, great team. Um, each of these tutors would be able to help you in anything you needed. Again, those nights, those weekends, Allie has openings. I think she has openings starting tomorrow. Uh, but I will say we've been booking up. Each week has been filling. So if you are interested and you have a tight schedule, I would look now because typically a few days out, they start to get booked up. So again, you can go to Archer Review Tutors and find us there, or you can scan that QR code. Now, let me answer a few more questions. Um, awesome. Someone on TikTok said they passed because of us. That is amazing. Thank you for letting us know that. Um, Reshma, sorry if I said that wrong, asked, should we focus on content or the cubing? Both. You should not just focus on one thing. Let's think of this like a nurse would, okay? We're, you guys are going to be future nurses or maybe you're already nurses. Um, but if I'm a nurse, am I going to focus on just what my client is telling me, or am I also going to focus on my nursing assessment, right? Like I'm going to put them together. We're going to get the whole picture. And that's what it's like studying for the NCLEX. You can't just do questions. You can't just do content. You need to pair them together because if you're doing core and questions, how are you going to improve on your knowledge with content? If you're doing really good in content, how are you going to develop testing strategies? with practice questions. It's really, really important, especially if you have our QBank. I want you to take readiness assessments. They should be your kind of priority along with CAD exams, but I want four highs or very highs consecutively on readiness assessments before you go ahead and take that exam. All right, what other questions did we get? Hi, welcome, Ronelda. Hi, Marilee. I probably said this wrong. Marilee, maybe that's how you say it. Sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Welcome. Glad to have you joining us from Alabama. All right. Any other big questions? If not, I have a bow tie ready for us to practice. Awesome. Ronaldo, just let us know that they passed last December. Thank you for Archer Rivers program. That is amazing. We do what we do. We work as hard as we can um, to be as affordable as we can for students like you every day. We want to watch you guys succeed. That is our goal. That is why we are here. Um, our passion is to help each and every one of you. Hi, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Looks like we've got some more people joining us. All right. Who's ready for a bow tie? What do you guys think of NGN? What do you think of bow tie questions? Before we get into it, I'm curious to hear. How do we think, what do we think about bow ties? Awesome. Jelaine just, I probably said that wrong too. I'm sorry, I'm horrible at names. Um, so they passed it last July. Highly recommend Archer. That is incredible. Thank you. All right, who's ready for a bow tie? Facebook, YouTube, are you guys ready for a bow tie? You guys are getting quiet on me. Are we ready? All right, let's go ahead and let's do it. Ready? So, 
here's our nurse's note. And what I would encourage you to do for any NGN items, this is how I like to do them, is I, if they are a standalone item, I would actually look at your question first and then go through your nurse's note, then go through your vitals, then go through the extra information they give you. Only for standalones, not for unfolding case study items, but for a standalone item, I would actually go ahead and look at your question first, okay? So let's do that. Let's go ahead, let's look at our question. Complete the diagram dragging from the choices below to specify what condition the client is most likely experiencing, two actions the nurse should take to address the condition, and two parameters the nurse should monitor to assess the client's progress. Okay, so we kind of know what we're looking for here. It's asking about Graves' disease, Cushing syndrome, hypothyroidism, SLE, or adrenal insufficiency. So keep that in the back of your head. And now let's go back. Let's review our, our nurse's note, our information that they're giving us. So this is where I would get my whiteboard out and I would start writing the big things out. I would start writing out what key indicators are we getting from the nurse's note, from the vital signs, what red flags are coming to you. Now, if you don't want to write them on a whiteboard, put them in the chat. So as I'm reading this through, start telling me the red flags you're seeing. The client reports significant fatigue that has worsened over the past eight weeks. Additionally, the client reports constipation, hair loss, and a three kilogram weight gain. She reports missing work because of difficulty concentrating and persistent fatigue. Okay, guys, what red flags are we seeing? Because I'm seeing lots of them. Just off that first section of the nurse's note. Significant fatigue. It is worsening. That tells me change in condition. Okay, we're really working to recognize and analyze these cues. We're working on these steps to clinical judgment right now, okay? So constipation, hair loss, weight gain, can't concentrate, just super tired. Guys, what are we noticing? Is my client slowing down or are they speeding up? Just based off that first paragraph, what do you notice? What things are kind of falling into the same category? Our client's kind of slowing down here. Things are slowing down for them. The client is alert and fully oriented. She appears fatigued, reports dizziness when she moves quickly. Periorbital edema, bruises, facial swelling were noted on assessment. Peripheral pulses were intact and weak, and the client denies any pain. All right, now let's look at our vitals. Our oral temp is 97, 36.1 Celsius. Pulse is 51. Respirations 15, blood pressure 93 over 61, O2 sat 95% on room air. Any red flags in our vital signs? Let's recognize the cues. Are there any red flags here? Good. That pulse is low, absolutely. Some of you guys said the BP, the blood pressure is like right on the fence for me. I would really, as an ICU nurse at heart, want to see what the MAP is doing. Um, if the MAP is over 65, my client is transfusing their vital organs. But yeah, you're right. That BP is like right on the fence. Are we good? Are we not good? I would really see what symptoms this client is presenting with. Because yeah, it's a little on the lower end, but not a major red flag yet for me on that blood pressure. And now we get these labs. Now, the beautiful thing about Next Generation NCLEX, I think my favorite part is they're going to give you the normal reference ranges. Did everyone know that? That you're going to get the normal reference ranges on the exam? Everyone know that? Awesome. Amazing. Looks like several of you did. Looks like several of you did. Okay. Some of you are saying, hey, I struggle with bow tie. That's why I'm here. That's why we're doing this. We're going to do some specific NGN um, free webinars coming up, by the way, where we focus a whole hour on them. Okay, so with this, we see our hemoglobin is low. Our hematocrit is low. Is this to the point that I need to do a blood transfusion? I want you just thinking about that for a moment. They're low, but are they to the point of needing to do a blood transfusion? Now we look at our glucose. That's good. Our sodium. Our sodium is just a little low. Are we worried about a sodium at 134? Are we concerned about this? No. If it's just one of, I'm not super worried. Now, if it was 128, if it was 130, then I'm worried. Then my client has that seizure risk, right? But one off, nah, it's not my biggest concern. Potassium looks good. B1 is good. Creatinine is good. Ooh, now we get to our thyroid stimulating hormone and that's high. 
And I really want you guys to notice this, okay? So when we look, this is high. Our serum thyroxine is what? It's low. And our serum tridothyronine is low. So if my TSH is high and my T3 and T4 are low, what do we have as our problem? Guys, what's the potential condition? Now with bow tie, my best advice when it comes to a bow tie is I want you to answer the middle first because the rest will just fall into place. So take more time considering that potential condition because this is the most important thing that you need to make sure that you get correct. So our potential condition, what do we have here? What do we think? Graves disease, which is just another name for hyperthyroidism, Cushing syndrome, hypothyroidism, SLE, or adrenal insufficiency. What do we think? Good. Thank you for tagging others, guys. That's awesome. I appreciate it. I agree. Hypothyroidism. Why? They're low and slow. Everything's slowing down. Here's a trick for you. TSH is always going to do the opposite of hypo or hyperthyroidism. So in hypo, TSH is high and hyper, TSH is low. T3 is kind of like a pitch hitter. It doesn't always know what it wants to do. Sometimes it follows the name. Other times it's like, nah, um, no, nah, I'm not going to. I'm going to stay normal. But T4 will almost always do the op or will do the same. Sorry, we'll do the same as the name. So T4, if we have hypothyroidism, T4 is low. If we have hyper, T4 is high. Just like we saw here, T4 was low. Okay, so what actions are we going to take? Let's just make these numbers. One, two, three, four, and five. Which actions, which two actions do you want to take? So we know we've got someone with hypothyroidism. Think about our client scenario. What are we concerned about here? What actions do we need to take right now? Yes. Look at you guys go. I'm not sure why YouTube is blurry for us right now. If you're struggling with YouTube, hop on Facebook, hop on TikTok. Um, only the advice I've got. I'm not sure why it's blurry. It's not blurry on my end when I'm looking at it. So I'm not sure what's going on for us. Okay. So with this one, we need a prescription for levothyroxine. Guys, what's levothyroxine? It's artificial T4. My T4 is low. I'm going to give levothyroxine. I'm giving T4. Obtain methamazole. Well, that'd be for hyperthyroidism, so we don't need that. Have the client complete a blood transfusion consent. Well, my H&H &H was low. Why am I not giving blood? Because it's not low enough yet. When do we typically transfuse? When do we typically transfuse? When are we going to, when are we going to give our clients blood? Yeah, typically around seven is what I've seen around seven. So hanging out at 10, hanging out at nine, we're not giving blood eight. We start thinking about it. Seven, we're giving that blood, right? Um, obtain in order for a urine cortisol level. Well, cortisol is telling me steroid levels. And that's a problem we would see when someone has Cushing's and adrenal insufficiency, their steroid levels are messed up. So that's not appropriate here. And then five, initiate fall precautions. Yes, why? Because our client felt dizzy. If our client feels dizzy, they're now a fall risk and we need to prioritize safety. Nice work, guys, nice work. So what parameters are we monitoring on this client? Because after we did the conditions and the actions to take, I can almost guarantee y'all are gonna get this one right. What parameters are we gonna monitor here? Welcome. Thank you guys for joining. I've got several people just joining. We are going through a bow tie question. I've got several more questions for us to practice together. All right, good. You guys got it. We're going to focus on those vital signs. Why? We were a little worried about that bradycardia. That blood pressure is right on the fence there. And I'm going to focus on serum TSH, T3, and T4. Why? Well, because they're significantly impacted. My TSH is high. My T3 and T4 are low. Nice work on that one, everybody. Great job. Great job. So here is our answer.
So I'm curious to hear from you guys. When is your exam scheduled for? Do I have people who are testing soon? Do I have people who are testing quite a ways from now? When is your exam scheduled for? Someone asked, what percentage do we need to get on Archer so we can think we're ready to pass the NCLEX? I am not focused on a percentage. I am focused on you getting four highs or very highs consecutively on readiness assessments. And I want you to get through our QBank. That's the priority for me as a tutor who's worked with Archer Review for two years. When students do those things, I see them be successful. When they're committed to the program, they show up each day and they do the best they can in their studies every single day. That's when I see them pass the exam. Okay, March 27th, March 20th, two weeks from now, May, June, studying for your exit, Hesse. Awesome. Love to hear that. Amazing. Past February 23rd. Thank you for letting us know. That's amazing to hear. Congrats. Good luck on your journey as a registered nurse. That's incredible. We've got some people not testing till October. Glad you're here. We've got several people on Facebook who are here just to uh just to watch, watch in. They've passed the exam already. That's amazing. Two days to go and anxiety is on the roof. If you just said on Facebook that you had two days to go, your anxiety is high. I would see if you could get one of those private tutoring sessions tomorrow. They will boost you up. They will talk you up. They will look at your scores with Archer Review and they will let you know if you are ready for this exam or not. And if you're not, push that test. But if you are, they'll let you know it and they will make sure you leave that session very confidently. So if that was you, I would highly recommend you doing a private tutor session. You can always try one and see if it helps. 600 questions left in your QBank. Hey, you're right on track. That's perfect. 600 questions to go. That's great progress. How does anyone survive the 48 hours waiting? Look, I've been there. I've done that. You know what I did? I stressed out. I checked my phone like every hour that day it was supposed to go live. Like, oh my goodness. And guess what happened? My results were on hold. They had to like make sure everything was okay. And I didn't even get my results at 48 hours in. So I get it. It can be hard to wait. Find things that distract you. Go to work, plan to hang out with friends, do something to distract you. If you've got nine very highs and four past cats, I feel really good about you going to take that exam. But anxiety can get in the way and you need to make sure you're controlling that anxiety and you're not allowing that anxiety to control you. Our QBank for the RN has about 2,900 questions right now, I believe, around 2,900, maybe a little over that. Um, let's see. Someone said, um, their score is always fluctuating. Sometimes it's a pass. Sometimes it's, um, low. Sometimes it's borderline. I, I look at overall trends of consistency. So if you get three highs, then a low, then four highs and a borderline, then two highs and a low, I'm looking at overall consistency throughout all of those. The difference between a readiness assessment and a cap. Great question. So a readiness assessment is going to be a set 85 questions, and it is going to rank you against how your peers did with the same questions. The goal is that you score at or above that peer level, because if you score what your peers do, and most people pass the NCLEX, you would also then like pass the NCLEX. So that's kind of the thought. You need to know at or more than your peers. CAD assessments are anywhere from 85 to 150 questions. Okay, 85 to 150 questions. And with that 85 to 150 questions, okay, um, it's going to adapt to you, it's going to adjust to you, and it's more similar to what the actual exam would be like on exam day. But our predictability of four highs or very highs comes with a 90, uh, what is it at right now? 98.9% .9 pass rate um, with Archer Review. And that's why we really emphasize those as tutors. I want you to do, when you do a readiness or assessment or a CAT, it's going to make it be mixed between NGN items and traditional. On the average day, I would just do traditional. Why? Because I want you to save your NGN items for those readiness assessments for those CAT exams. Absolutely. I want you to get four highs or very highs on readiness assessments. A couple past CATs are nice, but not my priority. And through our QBank, as far as you can get through our QBank. 
All right. I have no idea why the YouTube screen is blurry. I am so sorry. I'm not sure. I don't have a great answer of how to fix it. Um, maybe try joining Facebook. See if that one is also blurry. Hopefully it's not. Maybe try TikTok. See um, if those look a little bit better for you. I unfortunately don't have a way to fix it while I'm live. If you... So... Let me rephrase this. Everyone takes the next gen NCLEX. You need to practice both question types, but readiness assessments, CAD exams, and our Q Bank will include both types. I want you on like the average day practicing traditional so that you do those NGN in your readiness assessments, in your CAD assessments, so that it more closely mimics what you're going to see on exam day. But everybody gets next-gen NCLEX. That went into effect almost a year ago, April 1 of 2023. Awesome. Someone let me know that TikTok is clear. So if you're having a blurry screen on YouTube, join us on TikTok. It's clear there. You might have better luck. You might get better luck with us there. So real quick, I do want to tell you guys about small group tutoring. So this is my favorite thing that I get to do with Archer Review is small group tutoring. Um, we range from a cap of 12 to 15 students, depending on the tutor. And we go through things like two-hour NCLEX reviews, mock NCLEXs, test anxiety, EKGs, testing strategies, prioritization. Um, we really go through just about anything you can think of. We probably have a small group over it. Um, and really the goal of it is that it's more affordable to you. It's only $25 per hour. It's interactive. It's engaged. It gives you a chance to ask all your questions. It's a very supportive environment. Um, our tutors get rave reviews. The two-hour NCLEX review is our most popular. If you're about to test in the next like two weeks, that would be the number one session that I would recommend. And remember, when you go to the tutoring profile, you can mix and match tutors and types of sessions to get that discount. So at three sessions, whether it's private or small groups, you're getting a 10% off. At five, you're getting 15% off. And at 10 sessions booked, you are getting 20% off. You get a huge value. Um, and so what I would encourage you to do is look at the entire month of March. Everybody's March calendars are in. Um, look at the entire month of March and then figure out what you want. Do you want three sessions? Do you want five? Because you're going to get the best value. And I'm all about value when you book them all at one time. We currently are not hiring any tutors. Our tutor team is currently full. It is currently full. Here's also that QR code if you would like to do small group tutoring. All right. What other questions do we have? Someone said, so I should aim for four high readiness assessments in a row. Yes. But in a row, I don't mean like take all four in one day. I mean, take one on Tuesday, you get a high. Take one on Thursday, you get a high. Take one the next Tuesday, you get a high. Take one the next Saturday, you get a high. That's what I mean by that. <laughs> Someone said, hey, I want to take the NCLEX in April, May. How much should I study? So um, I don't know if you're a recent grad or not, because that kind of varies. If you're about to graduate, uh, I know the end of semester is really, really busy but your practice should really start now. So what I would encourage, if you go to our website, I would go to, I'm gonna show you guys RN, but PN has pretty much the same options. Um, sorry, my mic is hiding my screen. Anyway, when you go to RN, I would then go to the SurePass combo. SurePass combo is $159 is what it starts at, depending on how many days you're wanting it for. Um, but it includes our three-day live review. So it includes access to our three-day live review, which is a 24-hour high-yield NCLEX review. SurePass gives you access to our Monday, Wednesday, Friday live case study lectures. They're each one hour long. They're at all different times of day, so we can ac um, accommodate different schedules. Um, there's just one offering each Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then on Tuesday, Thursday, from 9 to noon central, there's always a live lecture going on. SurePass gives you access to all of that our Q bank and over, I think we've got over 70 hours now of on-demand videos. It includes everything that we have. Um, so somebody asked how to get to tutoring. So you would go to Archer Review, Private Tutors, and then NCLEX. And then that's how you can see what our schedule is, what's coming up. Um, I know our tutors all have quite a few things offered. So if we were to look at next week of what's kind of coming up, Megan's got some sessions, 
Emma has test taking strategies. It's probably one of my favorite ones to join. Um, Allie is full. And then Kate has a two hour NCLEX review and it's almost full. My guess is this two hour NCLEX review will be full by, by Sunday. I'm just guessing. They always fill. We never have enough spots. And then Megan has a big three PED systems small group where she focuses on pediatrics, the big three systems, respiratory, cardiac, and GI. Okay. All right. Did that all of our packages that include our QBank have readiness assessments and cats. You can take as many as you want as long as you have unused questions left in the QBank. You can take as many as you want as long as you have unused questions left in the QBank. What other questions do we have? There are study plans. Yes, let me show them to you. Let me get logged into my account here. So if I were to go to Archer Review and I logged into my account, I would then go down to study calendar. So the three-week plan, I do not recommend this for the average person. This is only if you just graduated and you did an NCLEX prep course in the entire last semester of your program. What I would much rather all of you think about starting with is the six-week plan, is the six-week plan. Um, so six-week plan, this one, this is what it looks like. It's going to tell you exactly what videos to watch each day, how many questions to answer each day, when to do a readiness assessment, and when to do a CAT. It's amazing. I absolutely love this study plan. We also have a 12-week plan. The 12-week plan is for people with kiddos at home, people who work full-time, people with a lot of time commitments. Then I would recommend the 12-week plan. It's pretty much the same. It's just spaced out over a longer period of time. Um, if you are still getting borderlines after trying and trying, private tutor session, do a small group, do something, we need to tweak what you're doing a little bit. Awesome. Someone just passed and found out today. That is amazing. Um, somebody said... Um, they were pregnant, they were anxious, um, and passed on uh, 120. That is incredible. That's amazing. Um, awesome. Awesome. I totally get that. I had a kiddo when I was in nursing school myself. So uh, I definitely get that. It's busy and there's a lot of time and energy that goes into that. All right. Wishing you guys the best of luck for those coming up to test soon. So let me go back to my slides here. I've got another practice question for us. The nurse, oh, funny, we were just talking about pregnancy. The nurse is caring for a pregnant client who is at 16 weeks gestation. She developed a pulmonary embolism and was initiated on heparin therapy two days ago. She's getting ready to be discharged. Which of the following medications do you expect the primary healthcare provider to order at discharge? Which by the way, this is kind of what our small groups would look like. Just the question part, not me telling you all about our tutoring services. But um, this is what it would look like. We would analyze these questions together. We would go through our answers together. Awesome. Another individual just let us know on TikTok that they passed in 85 questions. That is amazing. Kudos to you. If you guys are wondering what you need to do to get that same result, be consistent, show up every day, do the best you can. That's all I expect of you. That's what you should expect of yourself do the best you can. And if you do that consistently over a long period of time, even if the result isn't what you're looking for, you should feel proud of yourself because you're putting the work in and it's eventually going to work for you. I've seen people pass on their fifth attempt, their 10th attempt. Um, the, my personal record that I've worked with is 17th attempt. It is doable. Even if it seems hard, it's building that resilience. You know, the end goal is to pass here. You got to take each step. You got to work hard to really get to that final NCLEX success goal. And then the goal is that you're a safe, practicing, amazing nurse. And students who have to take the test several times, they've built that resilience, their understanding, they're building those characters, characteristics of what nurses have, which I think is incredible. Okay. Look at you guys go. You are getting this question. Amazing. So this is how I would do this question. I would say, okay, what med is safe for pregnancy? So warfarin, well, I know with warfarin that it crosses the placental barrier, which means it can lead to fetal hemorrhaging. It can cause a lot of complications. It is not safe in pregnancy. So A, nah, I'm getting rid of A. B and C, what do I notice? They both have the same ending. 
Well, if they both have the same ending, they're likely from the same class. So I'm getting rid of both of those. And then we've got um, D, low molecular weight and heparin. Well, what do I notice? She was already given heparin, which tells me that heparin is safe. So I would choose D because I already know it's safe in pregnancy. If you see the same question in, or the same word in the question and the answer, that's a big hint that it's probably that answer. So I would really, really encourage that. B and C, those are going to be um, our factor XA inhibitors. They're a little bit newer of an anticoagulant, but again, if one, if you haven't heard of it, don't choose it, but two, they have the same endings. We can eliminate them, not safe in pregnancy. All right, guys, the last thing I want to share with you, and I wanna know, how do you feel about pharmacology? We have a brand new course offering that we are starting in April. And I could not be more excited to start something new because I think it's going to be amazing. So I'm curious from you guys, how do you feel on farm? You Do you like farm? Do you not like farm? Warfarin is not safe in pregnancy. So definitely we do not want to give it in pregnancy. It can cause a lot of harm to that fetus. Okay, some people say they feel scared on farm. How are you guys feeling on pharmacology? Still struggling with it a bit. Don't like it. I get it. Totally get it. All right. Well, my last thing I want to talk with you guys about is our brand new live pharmacology crass course. We are starting at April 15th. Um, they will be four days long, 7 to 9 p.m. Central Time. So uh, we kind of got the feedback. Hey, you guys don't have a lot of evening offerings and we need help in farm. So from your guys' feedback, we have created a pharmacology crash course. This It looks incredible. Like to say I'm so excited is an understatement because I'm like max excited about this product that we are about to start offering. It will occur once a month. So the first one is April 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. It's four nights, two hours each night. Lauren is going to be our presenter of the farm crash course. She's amazing. She's working on her DNP, I believe, right now. She's great when it comes to pharmacology. She is amazing. Um, and I think this is going to be huge. So if you are interested, you can scan the QR code there. It is only $50 for all eight hours, way cheaper than our small groups. And we used to, she used to offer something similar as a small group, and it was too expensive for our students to attend all of it. That's why we made this live farm crash course. We want to be affordable for you guys. We want to help you with the needs that you have. So give me just one second. Let me grab the link for this so that you guys can register for it if you are interested. I am so excited for it. I think it is going to be amazing. All right, let me grab that link for you guys. All right, I'm gonna put that link on Facebook and YouTube, and I'll lastly get it on to TikTok. Awesome, Emil, just let us know that they passed the NCLEX, amazing. Sorry if I said your name wrong, I'm not great at names. It is $50, it costs $50, but it's eight hours of instruction. So really, I can't do math in my head. Let me see what this would equate to. Um, it is... Six six dollars an hour, six dollars an hour. That is cheap. That is so cheap. Nothing is six dollars. A Starbucks coffee costs more than that. So if you go out to get a coffee or a drink anymore, it costs more than six dollars an hour. So um, I'm hopeful that some of you guys will be interested in that and you will want to sign up for that. All right, guys, that was all I had to leave you with. If there's any final questions, I will answer them quickly. And then I need to hop off for the day. What'd you guys think of this style of Q&A, especially if you've joined me before? Did you like having those few practice questions? Did you enjoy that? Or do you prefer no practice questions? I'm curious, do you guys like them, not like them? How can I make this the most effective for all of you joining? It's $50 in the US. I have no idea what that converts to for other countries. Um, 50 US dollars. Okay, you like the practice questions, that's great. 
awesome, amazing. I want to give you guys one other link while you're here to a free offering. So stay one more minute. Let me get you the link. Um, the other thing that we have coming up pretty soon is on March 27th. So I know this is a little ways away, um, but it's preparing for the next gen NCLEX. So I am going to send you guys the link for that one. There are some other ones before then, but I did want to make sure everybody had the link for the NGN. So there is that. Um, we typically go live a couple times a month. I try to come on live and just do a Q and A every week. Um, but there's like established ones that are scheduled um, several times throughout the month. They're usually on Wednesdays for the scheduled ones. And then Thursdays and Fridays, I try to do some extra ones. All right, let me go ahead and get this to Facebook and YouTube. Facebook, there's that link to sign up. And the one I just sent is a free offering and it's just breaking down NGN. We're going to spend the hour working through NGN item types together. All right, guys, if you are anxious, again, I would really encourage that you guys go ahead and book a private tutor session. Let them help you. They all are equipped to help you with that test anxiety. But again, do the best you can. That is all anyone can ever expect of you. Make sure, take a few deep breaths, put some pressure on that vagus nerve so you can get yourself out of your fight or flight and go in with a positive mindset. Mindset is the biggest key when it comes to being successful on the exam. So make sure that you're talking to yourself positively and that you, <clears throat> that you are um, really building yourself up, not tearing yourself down because sometimes we can be our own worst enemies. I wish you all the best of luck. I'm rooting for you. If you're testing on Monday and you need some farm help, I would recommend a private tutor session because I don't think we have any farm stuff over the weekend. Or you could watch the on-demand farm video. That would be your other option as well. Good luck to each and every one of you. We are rooting for you. Thank you for being a part of the Archer Review family. We are here for you guys. If you need anything, you can always ask us questions at NCLEX tutors at archerreview.com. We would be happy to answer any and all questions that you have because we're on this journey to NCLEX success with each of you. All right. Bye guys. Good luck. Have a great day. And I can't wait to hear when you pass that exam. Bye everybody.